Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. I guess every gamer at least once encountered the following problem. You are playing a game you really like, everything is fine and you are doing great. But then out of the blue your ping is going crazy, your shots no longer register and you get a lot of rubber banding. Should this happen while you are playing ranked, then your skill rating will probably suffer as a result, which makes this even more infuriating. So what could cause this issue? The game server could experience a performance problem, which you can't do anything about. It could be your internet connection that is failing, where you will have to contact your ISP to get that fixed. Or your Wi-Fi connection degraded as a result of interference, bad weather or other users eating up too much bandwidth. Wi-Fi is really a very bad choice for playing online, especially when you play ranked. But the most common cause of this issue is that your router is suffering from buffer bloat, which basically means that the game's data packets queue up inside of the router or even get dropped by the router when someone or something else is eating up all your available bandwidth and the router is unable to prioritize the data packets of real-time applications such as online games. So to find out if your router is affected by buffer bloat, you just have to use a network cable to connect your PC directly to the router and then run a speed test on dslreports.com, a link is in the description down below. Please do not use Wi-Fi for this test, as you might not get conclusive results then, since your Wi-Fi might provide less bandwidth than what you get from your internet service provider. Now during the test you can see how maxing out your internet connection affects your ping. And if the buffer bloat rating shows anything but the A or A+, then you will experience ping spikes, packet loss and rubber banding when someone or something else maxes out your up or downstream connection while you are gaming. I actually had this issue every time my wife got home. It was almost like she could make our internet connection fail so that I would stop playing. But what really happened was that her phone began to sync pictures to OneDrive as soon as it connected to our Wi-Fi. And I then suffered from massive ping spikes as our ISP router did not prioritize the data of the game that I was playing. So what can you do to fix that issue? There are many very expensive so-called gaming routers out there which claim to fix lag or have awesome quality of service rules to ensure a great online experience. You can actually find a video on my channel where I tested the NetDuma R1 and the Nighthawk from Netgear. However, many of these gaming routers only affect the downstream traffic and ignore the upstream. Others need up-to-date external databases to detect the network traffic of applications. And then there are routers which only do bandwidth management on a per device basis, where you can then say that in example your PC gets more bandwidth than your wife's phone. But this does not help you a bit when you play Steam or Origin download a big patch while you are playing Overwatch on the same PC. So I guess that you don't like any of these solutions more than I do. Luckily there is an alternative called SQM or Smart Queue Management. Simply put, SQM will ensure that the router prioritizes data from real-time applications such as online games, so that their data does not get delayed or dropped. And the best thing about it is that you literally just have to turn it on. No further complex configuration required unless you really want to do some very special configurations and rules. Now, before you buy a router which supports SQM, you might want to check if you can install a custom firmware like OpenWRT, which also features SQM. The reason why I am not going to dive into the subject in today's video is that depending on your router, the process of installing a custom firmware can be both very risky and very complex. The SQM performance also depends on the processing power of your router, so it's quite likely that your current one will not be able to utilize your full up and downstream bandwidth when SQM is enabled. So what I want to do in today's video is guide you through the basic setup process of an Edge Router X from Ubiquiti, which has a smart queue traffic shaping performance of at least 100 megabits per second. Which means that if you have an internet connection with up to 100 megabits per second, then the processing power of this router will not become a bottleneck. But if you have a 200 megabits per second connection, then it will probably end up with about 120 megabits per second with smart queue enabled, as the CPU of the Edge Router X will then become a bottleneck. There is a very nice performance table inside the HOS manual, which shows you what you can expect with smart queue enabled. However, please always expect the lowest value to be the maximum bandwidth that you will get with smart queue enabled, as the performance depends on the size of the packets that are sent and received, as well as what else the router has to do, like port forwarding and firewall rules. The reason why I chose Ubiquiti's Edge Router X over their Unify security gateway is that the USG is basically an Edge Router Lite. 
and that has a smart queue traffic shaping performance of just 60 megabits per second due to its weaker CPU. So while the web GUI of the Edge Router X is not as nice as the one from the Unify controller, I recommend the Edge Router X over the USG as it costs much less while providing more bandwidth when smart queue is enabled. Now, unlike most other routers, neither the Edge Router nor the USG come with Wi-Fi. But that's not really an issue as you can just add one or multiple Unify access points. So for less than what most of these so-called gaming routers cost, you get a router that is really great for playing games online and Wi-Fi that will trump what most of these other routers have built right into them. In the description down below you can find links to these devices on Amazon and later in the video I will tell you how you can get a chance to win these two devices as I'm going to give away the Edge Router X and the Unify Access Point that I use for this setup guide. I also want to make clear that this video was not sponsored by Ubiquiti, nor do I get paid for promoting their products. I've been personally using and installing their products for over a year now, and since I and my customers are very happy with their performance and their low price, I simply want to make more gamers aware of the products as they really help to enhance your experience when you are playing online. So how do we get that setup up and running? First of all, if you are doing this for the first time, then you should really reach out to your internet service provider and tell them that you want to use your own router. I know that there are still countries and providers where this might not even be possible. So if you are not sure if you can just use your own router, then please talk to your ISP before you buy one. Okay, so before we even power up the Edge Router X, we must go to the ubnt.com website and download the latest firmware. Next, power up your Edge Router X and then connect your PC to ETH0. Open the network settings on your PC and then set the IP address to 192.168.1.2. Then use a web browser and go to 192.168.1.1. Use UBNT for the username and password. Accept the license agreement and click on Login. Now go to System, Upgrade System Image and click on Upload a file. Then select the firmware image that you downloaded from the UBNT website and click Open. After the image has been uploaded to the Edge Router, you have to reboot it and then wait until it applied the update. Then log in again using UBNT for both the username and the password. And if the router update went through, then you should see the correct version up here in the top left. Now it's time to configure the router. Click on the Wizards tab and select Basic Setup. Then choose the port to which you will connect your ISP modem to. Then you need to set your internet connection type. This is where you probably have to talk to your internet service provider to find out what you need to use here. Some of you might need DHCP, while others have to set a static IP address or use PPPoE with the user and password. I asked my ISP what I need to do to run my own router, so I know that I have to select static IP and then enter 172.16.254.50 for the address of ETH0, 172.16.254.1 as gateway and for DNS I can choose whatever I want. For a basic setup you don't need to touch any of the other settings except for the user setup where you should at least use a secure password for the default UBNT user. After you then clicked Apply Changes, the router will reboot and then use the new configuration. While it's doing that, you should then connect your PC to ETH1 and your ISP modem to ETH0 as that is the internet port that we used in the setup wizard. Then you go to the properties of your Ethernet adapter where you change the IP address as well as the DNS settings back to DHCP so that you get a new IP address from the Edge Router X. After that you log in again with the user and password that you set inside the wizard. Now to find out your maximum up and downstream bandwidth, you should do at least one speed test on dslreports.com or any other speed test that works better for your location. Then remember the result of the speed test, go to the QoS tab, enter a policy name, select the WAN interface, select the upload and download bandwidth and click apply. In case that you had to use PPPoE for your internet connection type, you need to choose PPPoE as WAN interface here. Now with SmartQ enabled you should do another speed test on DSL reports where your buffer bloat rating should now show an A or A+, which means that you will no longer get massive ping spikes when your wife's phone starts to upload pictures to the cloud. Another marriage saved by SmartQ management. 
So that's basically everything that you need to do to get the Edge Router X up and running. Games usually do not require that you forward specific ports to your PC or console. In fact, you can even make matters worse by setting up port forwarding rules, like when you have more than one PC that you play games on, or when a port is also used by another device or service. You should only use port forwarding when you experience issues in a game, where a moderate net status is not necessarily an issue. What can also help to troubleshoot connectivity issues or a strict net status is to enable UPnP or Universal Plug and Play. UPnP allows in example Skype to have the router forward specific ports to the device where Skype is running on. It essentially allows any UPnP device to punch a hole into your firewall, which is obviously a security risk where you really have to trust all devices and applications in your network. So if you want to enable UPnP, then you can do that inside the wizard here, where you just have to select your internal or LAN interface, in my case that is switch 0, as that will then apply to ETH 1, 2, 3 and 4, and ETH 0 for the external interface, as that is what I selected for the internet connection type. Again, if you had to choose PPPoE, then you need to select that as your external interface. So that would enable UPnP on any edge router. But if you want to use the newer UPnP2, then you will have to get your hands dirty by either using the CLI or SSH into the Edge Router. I will put a link in the description down below which explains how to enable UPnP2. Now, what if you don't trust UPnP or if you have to forward ports to specific devices in your network? In that case, you should first go to Services and select Few Details from the Actions drop-down menu of the DHCP service. Here you can then change the DHCP range, where I like to limit it to about 100 addresses and I also like to use the Google DNS servers. Now for port forwarding to work, the destination PC or console must always use the same IP address. To ensure that you could either manually set a static IP address which is outside the DHCP range, or you could use the map static IP feature inside the DHCP service, which will then remember that device's MAC address and always assign the same IP address to it. Now to create a port forwarding rule, you must go to the firewall tab, select your WAN interface, where again, if you use PPPoE, then you have to select that and not ETH0, then select your LAN interface, enter the original or incoming port, select the protocol, the LAN IP address that you want to forward this data to, the internal port that you want to forward it to, as well as a description. You can also add additional rules in case that you need more. And don't forget to click apply once you are done. Once you've finished setting up your Edge Router, you should also go to System and then download a backup of the configuration. You should also do that again after you upgraded the firmware or when you did further changes to the configuration, as you can restore a router very quickly when you have an up-to-date backup of the configuration. So now we need to take care of the access point. First of all, you connect the LAN port of the PoE injector to one of the Ethernet ports of the Edge Router and then you connect the access point to the PoE port of the PoE injector. Ubiquitous Unify devices do not have a web GUI. Instead, they use the Unify Network Management Controller to manage all Unify devices in your network. But unlike other centralized management systems, a Unify USG, switch or access point will still work even if the Unify controller is not running, unless you use special features like the captive portal for guest logins, of course. So if you deploy multiple Unify devices in your parents' house or a customer's house, then I highly recommend to go for the Unify Cloud Key, which is not only running the Unify controller software, but also allows easy remote access, which means that you can do config changes or firmware upgrades remotely without having to set up a VPN connection or do insecure port forwarding. However, in our case, a Cloud Key is simply overkill. So what I will do instead is go to the UBNT website and download the Unify controller software for Windows. Once the controller is running, you click on Launch a browser to manage the network. Then you select your country and click Next. Now you get a list of all Unify devices in your network, where you can then select the access point and click Next. Then enter a SSID or name for your Wi-Fi and choose a secure password, which is then required to access the wireless network. Now to access the controller, you need to create an admin user. Then click Next, make sure that the configuration is correct and finish. What we get now is the login box for the UBNT Cloud Access, which you would need if you want to remotely access a site on which you run a Unify Cloud Key. 
But since we have a local installation of the controller which is not even running all the time, you have to select Skip and then log in with the admin user that you just created. Now click on Wireless LAN and upgrade the firmware of the access point. After the upgrade finished, click on the access point and go to Tools, where you then start an RF scan. The access point will then scan for other wireless networks and then choose the best channels for both the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands. Once it finished the scan, you are done. There is no further configuration required for a basic Wi-Fi setup. However, if you want to, then you could change the name of the access point, you could manually change the settings for the 2.4 and 5 GHz radios, you could set up a separate Wi-Fi network for the 5 GHz band, you could create a guest network where users have bandwidth limits and can't access other devices on your LAN, or you could do a lot more. However, if you just want to have Wi-Fi, then you don't need to do anything else, except the backup of the configuration. So that's it. Now you have good Wi-Fi and a router which prioritizes data of online games. However, even though the Unify Access Point is a very good device, you should still not use Wi-Fi for online gaming, especially when you play ranked. Even with this setup, you can still run into issues when you use Wi-Fi, as it can be affected by interference and the distance between you and the access point, as well as the walls or ceilings between you and the access point, have a very big impact on the quality of the wireless connection. You can find links to the Edge Router X as well as the Unify Access Point in the description down below, where I also explain what you have to do for a chance to win these two devices that I used for this setup guide. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon. Without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, my channel could simply not exist anymore. So if you like my work, then you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you can also do a one-time donation. If you want to stay up to date on what I'm currently working on, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description down below. And if you don't want to miss the next one, then you might want to subscribe to my channel and click on the little bell icon below this video to receive a notification when I upload the next one. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.